Boy, wow, she's up and down. Stop. You missed the field. No shit. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, I know it's been a long time since I've done a video, um, certainly a build or a project video. And um, while I was working on my latest project, I realized that I have put up uh, videos and images on Instagram and, and Facebook and things like that and never really introduced the project. So uh, as I get ready to move into the next phase, um, of the tandem wing project. I figured it was about time to introduce the project to you guys. Um, so here it is. This is really doesn't have an official name yet. So uh, I've just been calling it the tandem wing project. Um, really, it's a tandem wing VTOL project. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit more. This is the current prototype. This is what I'm considering a half scale uh, version um, of, of what I really wanted to build eventually would be about twice the size of this. But this is the half scale tester uh, that I built for testing the aerodynamics of the tandem wing design. And really, the it, it really didn't start out this way. Um, I'll show you the earlier prototypes. So the first prototype. Uh, is this one and this is my uh, this is kind of a uh, raspberry floppy here um, basically the idea with this one was uh, this is a chuck glider and uh, the idea here was that the wings um, we can change the angle of incidence on the wings and the idea with this was to test the aerodynamics and to test uh, the model uh, that I developed uh, the calculations to figure out the actual uh, wing incidence between the two wings, which on a tandem wing, if you're not familiar with a tandem wing, uh, the angle of incidence and the size of the wings really uh, have a complicated relationship. And as I was modeling this, um, setting the center of gravity and playing with all of those parameters, I wanted something that I could uh, run a design, run the model, take a look at where the center of gravity should be and the wing incidence angles, um, adjust this and throw it and actually see how it worked in real life. So that was um, the idea with this and it did a pretty good job. This is just um, rigid insulation with a coating of uh, clear laminate on it just to make it a little allow it to survive some, some crashes. Uh, it did pretty good, uh, and it gave me the information I needed, but then I needed to uh, move on and go to something a little more robust. And this is the version two. And basically this is a hot wire cut uh, wings and some EPP uh, foam fuselage at the single tail in the back. On this version, I put the rear wing higher and the front wing lower. Uh, the idea here was to try and keep the rear wing out of the downwash of the front wing. Um, and what I ended up finding out with this was it, it actually flew quite well. I've got a uh, little FPV camera up here and a little 1407 motor on it. Um, it flew quite well. It was actually really uh, aerobatic, which surprised me. Um, but with a short wingspan, you know, the, there's uh, a lot of uh, rapid roll uh, on something like this. But what I found was, uh, you know, this working on this relationship between the two wings, uh, with the wing higher in the back and lower in the front, things got complicated. Um, Mainly, I went to the, the current design, which is the two wings on top, just 
for buildability. It was just a lot easier to design and build around having both wings on top. So this is the version two. Um, fun little plane. Okay, moving on. This is version three. Yeah. Um, well, this is what version three looks like now, which is why we have a version four. Uh, version three is um, very similar to the design of the version four. Version four, in fact, they're pretty much identical. Uh, the main difference is this was made out of uh, cheap rigid insulation uh, with a fiberglass covering. And the version four is made out of uh, wire cut EPP with a laminate coating. Um, this was uh, the first really full powered uh, version. This had, uh, just like the version four, has a single motor in the back. This had a flight controller in it so that I could measure uh, a bunch of parameters while I was testing it and uh, start to do some efficiency testing. Um, this flew great. This was, uh, it was light, um, it flew really well, it just didn't crash very well. And um, honestly, this was not that hard of a crash. I overweighted it threw off the center of gravity, had uh, had pretty good control in the air. It was just coming in. It was constantly stalling and recovering, stalling and recovering. And I was trying to get it in, uh, get it on the ground as quickly as possible. And it kept uh, getting into ground effect and popping up. And then I ran out of runway and stuffed it in a bush. Um, and this is how it came out. So rather than spend any time trying to rebuild it, I decided to move on to version four um, and just chalk this up to a learning experience. Okay, so back to version four. I'll spin this around so you can see the back. So basically what we have are uh, two wings, the tandem wing configuration, uh, this is a 26-inch wing in the front, 35-inch wing in the back, and then the single pusher. Now, my idea all along, and if some of you have seen my earlier videos, then you will have seen some of my, uh, my VTOL projects, which I've been working on and off for about a year, a year and a half. And this was one of my ideas for a VTOL, being a four-motor tandem wing VTOL. Um, but... I needed to get my feet wet with the aerodynamics first because this is something very new to me, the tandem wing configuration. And I wanted to build something that I could test with without having to worry about the whole VTOL experience, just a horizontal flight test. Uh, and that's what this is. And this is, has a removable hatch up here on top and I've got the GPS mounted up here in the lid. And, you can see down inside. Um, I've just got a, a uh, plywood frame in there housing the electronics. The battery sits up here. Uh, this was a very successful plane and I'm very happy with the way it flies. Um, it, let's see, I've maxed out with a, uh, an 8400 milliamp hour 4S uh, lithium ion pack, I've gotten over an hour of flight time uh, at 45 miles an hour. So, um, you know, got 45 to 50 miles of actual flight with it. So, pretty happy. Um, got the FPV camera here in the nose. Got to experiment with different wing treatments, wing tip treatments, um, different airflow. Um, but now I'm gonna take this to the next step. Uh, some of you have probably seen uh, on Instagram and stuff like that, some of the stuff that I've started working on. I am going to take this to the next step, which is the VTOL. So this will have motors on the wing tips. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the design on the computer and I'll explain a little bit why uh, I've chosen this configuration and um, what I'm hoping this will bring. Let's go take a look. Well, here we are. This is the design for what I'm calling version five of the tandem wing VTOL. Uh, 
I have got to come up with a better name for this project. Okay, so what you can see here, uh, this is uh, Fusion 360, and you can see the design here. It's very similar to the version 4. Um, it's a little bit different because the version 4 was actually uh, hand cut. So this is uh, as close as I could get to what my actual uh, hand cutting look like on the version 4. So here you can see we've got the four motors around the outside and these will be rotating, uh, rotating motors obviously. The idea behind going with this tandem wing is that um, by going with a tandem wing I can move the center of gravity back towards the center of the plane. In fact, uh, with this current configuration the center of gravity um, is somewhere right around here. It's almost halfway between the two wings. So that gives me the ability to share um, the lift evenly among all four motors. And that way uh, I can use you know, four of the same size motor and prop configuration. Um, one of the biggest problems I had with the earlier version was with a single wing, you've got a certain uh, area that you need to have uh, your center of gravity along your main wing. And then when you transition into VTOL mode, um, you've got to be careful with uh, where you're, you've got a different center of gravity set up, obviously. In my older, uh, the earlier versions of the VTOL, I was using a tricopter mode with a much smaller motor in the back. And what I found was to just getting the center gravity in, in vertical mode was really tough um, because uh, that third motor was quite a bit in the back and it was uh, and it was having a hard time controlling the pitch. You know, it would, it would spool up and it would pitch forward, but then there wasn't enough weight on that back. So uh, actually moving backwards was, uh, was difficult. So uh, by going with the the tandem wing here, um, I think we've solved that issue. And I've already proven in the forward flight testing versions that uh, the center of gravity is, is in the correct place. Now, I've decided that uh, I want to go ahead and really complicate this. So not only am I doing a tandem wing um, and a VTOL, but I'm going to experiment with some new materials too. So everything you see here in the dark gray is actually going to be a lightweight fiberglass uh, construction. So that will be a, a light fiberglass with a uh, honeycomb core. And then everything you see in this gold um, right now is I plan on printing that. So right here you can see uh, printing here in the wing beds. This is because I want to make sure that my wing incidence angles are where I want them. And if I need to change them during testing, then I just need to print a new wing bed uh, and not have to change or remold anything. Um, if we take a look here from the top, you'll see that the front wing I've got a clip out here. This is where the ailerons are up in the front. This will be an elevator. So the elevators will be in the front, ailerons will be in the rear. Um, you notice that I've got a 26 inch wing in the front and a 35 in the back. And the reason for that is because um, that allows me to shift the center of pressure back, which allows me to move my center of gravity back. If these wings were exactly the same size, then that center pressure, because that front wing is in free flow air, that center pressure would actually slide forward. Uh, and while that might be beneficial in a standard, you know, uh, forward flight aircraft, um, the whole goal of this was to really center that center of gravity in the middle of the middle of the aircraft. So I went with a slightly smaller uh, front wing. So. The, the tandem gives me, you know, like anything in aerodynamics, um, there are some benefits and then there are some drawbacks um, to the structure. So on the side of the benefits, a tandem wing allows you an efficient, um, 
an efficient wing configuration by allowing for a very high aspect ratio wing without having a very long wing. So basically the wings work together as if they were one long wing and with a very high aspect ratio, I really can uh, reduce my induced drag. The other, you know, that we've already talked about the other reason, which was to, to move the center of gravity back. Another nice side effect of this is the fact that my front wing, we're going to use a, a rectangular wing, so my stall pattern should be from the center out towards the tips uh, with a rectangular plan form. The nice thing about this is that this wing in the front is smaller and has a higher wing loading and has an actually has a higher uh, angle of incidence. The front wing is at two and a half degrees, the rear wing is at 1.75 degrees. And because it has a higher uh, incidence and will fly at a higher angle of attack and has a higher wing loading, the front wing will stall first. This uh, really uh, allows us this plane, this configuration to stall very gently. The front wing stalls, the nose drops, thus unloading um, that front wing and reducing the angle of attack, gaining speed when it drops, and then recovering. And uh, I've done some testing on my testing versions, and that is in, in indeed the case. I can fly this very slow, and when it does stall, uh, the nose drops a little bit, and it picks up speed again, and off it goes. So uh, that's uh, definitely a nice feature. Uh, some of the drawbacks, well, the main drawback is that while you do get the advantage of having a high aspect ratio uh, due to a number of losses and, and the way the, uh, the two different wings are at different angles of incidence and the downwash from the front coming across the rear wing, you really don't get the efficient, same efficiency you would if you had a single wing that was the length of the two wings combined. So, we do leave some efficiency on the table, um, but I think we make up for that uh, in the ease of lifting in the vertical uh, vertical flight regime. So, I mean, you have to look at VTOLs and realize that they're never going to be as good as um, a quadcopter or you know any type of heavy lift drone, and they're never going to be as good as something that is designed to only go forward. Um, they're a compromise between the two, so it's always going to fall somewhere in between the two. But uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a fun project. And this gives me the ability to practice uh, and learn new te techniques with things like fiberglass and uh, honeycomb core, uh, different printing techniques, things like that but on a smaller scale. So when I screw up, and it's inevitable, I will screw up, I'll probably screw up a lot, it won't be quite as expensive. Um, we can go ahead and we can pull the lid off here and see that this will be a hollow construction. Um, I'll pull the top off the wing here. So here is the inner rib construction for the front wing. And then the motors here pivot on these uh, carbon fiber tubes, which allow me to bring uh, the wires out into the nacelles. But uh, I'm not gonna go into too much of that because I'm planning on doing some update videos as I go through here. The next one will probably be on the wing design and wing construction. Um, and then I will cover uh, the motor nacelles. Um, when I get to that point. Now, like I said, you've probably seen some of the leaked uh, stories and stuff on my feed on Instagram. Um, so, you know, I have started on this project. Um, I really neglected to update and really introduce the project to everyone. So I figured I would go ahead and introduce it now. And then I will try and keep everybody uh, up to date with some update videos along the way. Um, some test flight, test hover 
and uh, transition flights, hopefully, those are always exciting. Uh, you can look back at some of my others and, uh, and you'll see all the excitement that, uh, that we had with those. So that's basically all I wanted to cover here. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or, um, or anything like that, go ahead and put them down below, reach out, hit me on uh, Instagram, whatever. Um, this is going to be a fun winter project. And now that the temperature uh, has dropped and we're into winter uh, and we're out of flying season, um, I definitely should have some more time to spend on this, I hope and uh, be a good learning experience. So uh, I will catch you guys on the next one.